Hi, and welcome to Seaside Quilting Tutorials. Today, <clears throat> we are on block 12 of our uh, sampler quilt that we've been working on. This is the last block. I'll be having a tutorial coming up pretty soon. Um, just need a couple, maybe a couple more days to get my voice back. <clears throat> somewhat to normal um, and then I'll be doing a tutorial on squaring up your blocks and also I'll be doing a tutorial on say you did three or four of the blocks or five or six of the blocks and you haven't had time to finish and you're not sure you're going to have time to finish I'll be showing you um, some things that you can do with your blocks besides just make a quilt. And it's it's good to see also just in case you would like, you know, you like certain blocks more than the other blocks. You'd see how to maybe make some placemats and some other things out of your blocks. So I'm going to kind of go over this a little quick today. Um, I just haven't been feeling too good lately. Um, so today we're doing the maple leaf block and I'm hoping that you're being able to hear this really well because I'm hoping I don't have to film it again but if I do I do. I'm pretty sure that everyone is now, um, if you've been following through the tutorials, you know how to do the half square triangles. So this is going to be a super easy block for you if you have been following through with our other blocks. And even if you haven't, this is a very easy, easy block to do. And it's a nice block, especially when you do it in fall colors. You can do a whole entire quilt, you could do placemat, so many other things. And we'll, we'll go over those things at another time when my voice is a little better. And I just want to take a moment to uh, congratulate any of you that have made it this far and have completed your blocks. I know that some of you are probably waiting until the end of the blocks to see what all goes together and you'll, you know, maybe have already picked out your fabric and haven't had a chance to get to it yet. Some of us don't get a chance to uh, do quilting until, you know, fall or winter because summer is very time consuming as well, especially if uh, you're a gardener. So, you're going to need to cut two light four and seven eighths inches, two dark four and seven eighths inches. You'll cut two light four and a half inches, and you will cut three dark four and a half inches. And I'll be putting that in a PDF file in our group. I'm really uh, sorry about my voice. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our dark and our light and put your right sides together. And you will want to make a mark diagonally from one corner to the other. And I'm just, today I'm using a, uh, a Mark Begun water soluble pen. So just make your mark. And when you're making your mark, you want to keep your ruler just a tad away from that corner so that um, you mark it into the corner. And then, 
if you don't have the quarter inch guide foot, you'll want to make a mark on each side a quarter of an inch away from that mark. Let me see if I have my ruler handy. I do not know at the moment where my ruler is that I normally keep at my table uh, for extra marking, but you would just take your, your ruler and measure a quarter of an inch from your line and make a mark here on this side and make a mark here on this side. And if that's unclear, we've gone over this in many of our other tutorials. A little trick that I do, rather than marking mine, I'm going to move my camera a little bit. Sorry about that. I use the quarter inch guide foot. It has the little lip that comes out on the side so that your fabric can go against it. But what I'm going to do is when I sew, I've got my machine set up to quarter inch to work with my quarter inch guide foot. And I'm just going to let that guide run down that line. And I'll sew on this side of the line and then I'll turn my fabric. And I'm going to let my guide foot run along that line. And I'll sew on the other side and that will put a quarter of an inch stitch mark on both sides of my line. You just want to be sure that you, if you're doing it this way, that you keep that guide right on that line. So now, either way that you do it, if whether you've marked or you're using your guide foot, I have a quarter of an inch line on each side of that center line. And now I'm going to cut on that line. So I will cut this piece right in half on that diagonal line. And there's my two pieces. You'll fold them open and you want to have your, your, your fold go toward the dark side and I just finger press it first. And you'll go ahead and you'll do that with both of them. And then you have two half square triangles. And you will do that with your other two, uh, your other light and dark four and seven eighths pieces. And you will end up with four half square triangles. So we're doing our block in three sections. I'm going to cut off the dog ears on each corner. <coughs> so we're going to line 
<coughs> sorry we're going to line this up so that our dark side of our point is going up on both of these this is the bottom row and then we'll have a light on the end let me see if I'm getting that into the camera for you So you will go ahead and you will sew these three together. So I'm just going to fold this over to the right side. And I'll do my seam all the way from one end all the way to the other after I line them up. And you could either pin or clip your pieces together so that they're lined up nicely. And with these, you could either press all your seams to one side or the other, and you'll do that with each of your rows so that they're opposite from each other. And I'm going to finger press it first. And then I'll give it a little press with my iron. And remember to press, don't iron, just press. And then we'll add the light square four and a half inches to the end of this row, right sides together. Now I only put one pin at the end to keep it in place, but if you feel that you need a couple, that's fine. And then I'm going to sew my quarter of an inch seam from one end all the way to the other end. Again, you will finger press and then press with your iron. side I did <laughs> I was worried for a minute there so I already went ahead <coughs> so I already went ahead and I did my other two rows and you'll s <coughs> sorry Whew. So I already went ahead and I did my other two rows so I could make the tutorial just a little quicker today. And you'll just follow doing a light, a dark, and then a half square triangle with your dark point heading towards your 
dark. So all of your dark points will be heading inward towards your dark, which will make up your leaf pattern. And then you'll have two, two darks that are your four and a half inch squares and then your half square triangle. You'll just put those right side to right side, line up your rows, stitch from one end to the other with a quarter of an inch um, stitch. And then you'll add your bottom the same exact way. And I'm gonna put right side to right side. I like to match up my end first. And then I'm going to match, line up my seams and you'll do the same with the other two rows. And they just butt up against each other as long as you have your seams going one way and then the other way on the other one. And I'm going to do the same with the other seam. <clears throat> and I'm going to do a quarter of an inch stitch line from one end all the way across to the other end. then <clears throat> just finger press that open first and then you'll want to press it with your iron after and that's your maple leaf I think that's such a pretty block, even in the blues, because I love blues. <coughs> so that's our last block for the sampler quilt. And like I said, in a few days, uh, <coughs> once I can get my voice a little bit better, I'll come back so I can explain squaring up your blocks and putting them together for your quilt and some options for putting them together for your quilt. I hope that you've been enjoying these tutorials. Um, I would love to hear some feedback on if you would be interested in doing another uh, sampler type quilt, maybe um, with some more advanced blocks. Um, let me know you know what you're thinking the next one will be a lot more planned out so that we'll know a little more specifics of how many fabrics you'll need and how much of each fabric uh, I didn't start this one so I'm just continuing it um, for the person who started it which it's really wonderful that she did start this for us 
we really appreciated the time that she put in and I'm thankful that I got a chance to um, help teach this quilt so if you have any questions please leave a comment we I hope that you'll take a moment and <coughs> like our video please subscribe to our channel and next to the subscribe button there is a little bell and if you click on that bell you can change notifications to all so that as more tutorials come up you'll get notified right away and get to view them also if you have not been seeing our lives on Facebook we have a live every Thursday evening called sip and shop we have pop-up lives daily um, which we've been doing recently as um, a theme week each week. It's a new thing that we've been doing. So please see us on Facebook. And you can find us on Facebook by searching Seaside Quilting Supplies LLC. Like the page. Check the notifications and set those to all. And each time that one of our pop-ups comes up, you should get a notification. And every other Sunday, um, oh, and the Thursday Night Live, just in case I did say it because my brain's a little foggy, um, our Thursday Night Sipping Shop is at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And we have uh, every other Sunday, we have a regular um, Sunday Fabric Fun Day at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and that's when we show most of our new fabrics and new notions and so forth. The Thursday Sipping Shop tends to be notions and sales and other things. So I hope that you have enjoyed this, and I wish you happy sewing.